What's going on guys? Hope you're all having a great day today. Now, before we go ahead and hop into this commentary, just want to run this past you guys really quick. Won't take too much of your time out of this commentary. But the majority of my viewers that watch this channel are usually subscribed, so I don't really get recommended too often. I would say I would say the majority of my views come from people who actually go ahead and subscribe and join the channel and want to watch the content that's posted on this channel. So don't forget, because I do believe around, I think it's 55% of you guys are still not subscribed and it's coming through your home feed probably and you probably watched a video in the past and you're still watching it today, but you might have forgot to push the sub button. So if you guys do enjoy what you see today, don't forget, go ahead and subscribe and you'll definitely get notified if you do hit the bell for all my future uploads. So sometimes on this channel, I do like to take some breaks from ranting and try to help people try to enjoy the Modern Warfare experience. I know a lot of people coughed up like 60 to $100 on this title, and they just want to get their money's worth. So I'm, I try every once in a while to come up with some tips that I use for myself to help me calm down, push through the experience, and try to enjoy the experience a little more in Modern Warfare. And the number one thing I can honestly tell anybody who's having the worst of worst experiences in Modern Warfare is to go to Ground War. Now, I know, this is something that you do not want to hear. You hate Ground War, it's Battlefield, you don't want to play 6v6. That's fine, you can go ahead and play 6v6 if you want, but the rage is still going to be there. And trust me, coming from me, I play this game a lot. I'm a pretty decent player, pretty decent KD. I think it's a 2.37 or something like that. I'm trying to grind up to the 3. I started off really bad in Modern Warfare, but I'm getting there. But I'm a decent average player at Modern Warfare. Not too crazy, but I, I can get my good games. You know what I'm saying? And 6v6 just isn't the experience that you want. No matter how good you get, 6v6 is still going to be slow, boring, sluggish, tiresome. Now, if you're craving those 100 kill games like you could get in old school Call of Duty titles, maybe uh, Black Ops 4, I could uh, throw out there for you, where you are playing in these, um, well, TDMs and stuff like that in 6v6, the best way you can get those type of scores in Modern Warfare is through Ground War. 10v10 would have been the option if the game wasn't so poorly made. So, <laughs> since this game is booty cheeks, your next best option is Ground War. Now, today's video is going to be teaching you how to play Ground War. I know it's an annoying game mode, and it doesn't feel like Call of Duty, but my job today is to help you make it feel like Call of Duty, like your classic 6v6 experiences. Now, Ground War might seem a little intimidating to people who like smaller maps. It's a lot of open space, a lot of ground to cover, and a lot of snipers and people holding ridiculous angles just waiting for you to run across an open field because, trust me, there's always going to be a lot of open fields to run across. Now, also, I want to mention, I'm not going to be talking about this, uh, well, my tips for Ground War, well, equally to my gameplay. It's not going to match up, but I was just hoping that you guys could watch this gameplay, and maybe from time to time, my commentary in the gameplay might sink from here to there, but I just want you guys to mostly see what I do, how I work around this map. I think I want 107 kills and 9 deaths, so it's a really good gameplay, so definitely keep it in mind, watch what I'm doing, and you'll probably learn from that as well. Now, obviously, Obviously, ground war maps are massive. The way you want to play these maps are simply like Battlefield. I know, I know you don't want to hear about Battlefield, but it's how you got to play it. Each flag is basically the size of a little maybe mini TDM or mini uh, free-for-all area. So you want to be able to gain control of flags, hold them down, and even defending some flags will be important for enjoying this experience. You might think it's slow-paced, but trust me, it's a lot of ground to cover per each flag. And if you can position yourself uh, correctly in these spots, which I will explain how to position yourself later in this commentary, you will get a lot of action. And you don't have to move so frequently in these type of game modes. Remember, rushing is good. That's how you want to play these Call of Duty games if you want to be more experienced and if you want to stay alive. You can't just sit in one spot the whole game you will get killed. There's times you have to move, there's times you have to reposition, but if you want to get high kill games, and any Call of Duty game, it doesn't even matter. Even in Black Ops 4, you might think it's insanely fast paced, but positioning is key in every single Call of Duty game. You want to be in a better position, always. It doesn't matter what FPS game you are playing, it doesn't matter. That's just key to any FPS game. If you want to be good at Battlefield, 
Apex Legends, PUBG, Rainbow Six, over doesn't matter what game the FPS game is about, you have to have the better position. So at times, you have to slow down. At times, you can't push things that aren't pushable. At a certain point, you will push yourself into your own death, you know? So at times, you want to stay back a little bit and let the enemies come to you. So instead of wanting to go from one flag and instantly move over to another flag, try to hold down the area. Like on C flag on the palace. It's a massive palace area, and it's surrounded by three main flags. The D flag, the E flag, and I think the A flag as well. It's completely surrounded. So it's always going to be action forming around the C flag. There's always going to be stuff going on. So instead of pushing from the middle flag to the enemy flag, which will probably lead to your death because so many people are waiting for you to push that area, I would just suggest staying on the C flag and have their wave of enemies push you. Defending isn't that boring, honestly, and defending is a main factor in a lot of objective game modes. You can't just constantly attack flags, sometimes you have to hold them. Sometimes you have to defend them. And let me tell you, defending is just as fun as attacking. Have you ever like held down a flag against like 10 enemies by yourself? How insane, how hectic that actually is while people are pouring into your building and people are still at the other flag pouring in. You have to manage the people inside while you manage the people still pushing from outside. It's a lot of stuff that goes on while you defend a flag. So trust me, the action is there and the stuff that you crave, the hectic gameplay that you want out of Call of Duty is still in this ground war experience, whether you're defending or attacking. Now let me tell you the best thing about ground war. The main thing that you need to know while playing this is where the enemies are coming, where they're spawning from, which flags are hot, and where you should go from your location that you're at. It's very easy, but a lot of people don't even bother thinking about that. Like I said, when people play Call of Duty, Call of Duty is a very just casual, mindless game. It's not much thinking to it, you know? It's And that's why I love it personally. You can just hop on, relax, just run around, pick up kills. That's what it's usually about. But 6v6 is broken this year, and that gameplay is kind of out the window. So Ground War, if you want that crazy experience, if you want that fast-paced, a lot of action, you're going to have to stay on your toes and keep thinking of where the enemies are and trying to, I wouldn't say necessarily spawn trap, but guess where they are spawning and let them come towards your direction. It's really about guessing which flags are hot. Now, you can go to a flag. If someone has an enemy flag capped, yeah, it might be someone there. But you have to be careful which ones you push because you're going to waste a lot of time. If you're in the middle flag C and you're pushing to their spawn, which is E, but nobody's on there, then obviously they have to be in a different direction. Maybe they're on D. Maybe they're on B. Who knows which flag they're at, but that's your job to find out. So if you push to E and nobody was there... You wasted all that precious time that you could have been going to another hot spot on this map to pick up more kills. And more than likely, you will either be killed while going to that spot now, or maybe you can luck out and wait at E enough to find people, but you might have to camp there for a long time. And camping gets boring if there's no action, you know? It's no point in camping if you're not doing anything that's actually benefiting the team. Now, if there's a bunch of enemies pushing you and you're mowing them down, you're helping. But if you're just camping in a spot with nothing you're not really doing nothing. So make sure that you understand where the enemies are. The best way to do this, honestly, is to just look at what you, where your teammates are pushing, where your teammates are at, uh, when an enemy is capping a flag. Usually, that's the most, well, the best time to push a flag is if you have a flag, like let's say you're holding C, and you see enemies are taking it. Now, if they're taking it very quickly, it's probably going to be a hot flag. C is right smack dab in the middle of the map, which means a lot of people are probably going to spawn there the second the enemies take that flag. So wherever you are, you should be trying to reposition on the C flag, not really to take it back, but to hold the enemies that are pouring out of it. C would be hot if the enemies just freshly took that flag. Everybody who's dead is going to be trying to spawn on that direct flag there. So if you just chill in C, find a nice spot without having to go and, you know, put yourself in the open by capping the flag, you can mow out a lot of enemies while doing that. They will just continuously keep spawning on kills, and a lot of them will probably just be trying to revenge kill you, so they'll just keep spawning C just to try to find you, but it's going to be crazy. It's going to be hectic. It's going to be a lot of action, and like this whole point of the video, I'm trying to allow you to have some fun. 
I know this game isn't very fun, so the most action that you can get is the best experience. So if you see enemies taking flags very quickly from you, those are usually going to be pretty hot spots, and they're going to be looked at by the enemy team as good spots to spawn. And if you can get there in time, if you can hold a good position there before you know they start spawning out and pouring at you, then you should hold it. Now, if you can't get there in time, ignore it. Don't bother trying to get it. Just go in another direction and move on from that experience and try to find another hot spot. Also, use your deployable screen to your advantage. A lot of people don't use it that often. They just try to spawn on their teammate the fastest they possibly can or spawn on a flag the fastest they possibly can. They don't actually look at it and see what's going on. There is a lot, and I mean a lot, of knowledge that you can get by looking at the overview map after you die. Now, usually, you know, as Call of Duty players, when we die, we quickly try to, you know, <laughs> tap ourselves back into the action. So I understand where you're coming from if you're just trying to quickly get into another spawn to get into some more action. But you can pinpoint the action a lot easier. Sometimes we push into the gameplay, which will get you either killed right off of the spawn, or it'll just put you in a bad position, or you'll just spawn yourself where there's absolutely nothing going on. You have to run a mile to find stuff. But if you actually pay attention to the overview map after you die and try to see where the enemies are pushing from, see where your teammates are pushing from, see where the combat's going, you can spawn yourself in a very strategic spot. Whether you want to spawn on a flag behind those enemies or if you see a teammate that's near the action but at a good uh, viewpoint where you can shoot them from the side or maybe get a flank on them, you can spawn on them. There's a lot of things that you can see that you wouldn't necessarily see if you didn't have this overview map. So make sure you pay attention to that. Don't just quickly spawn in as fast as you can. Make sure you understand where you're going because you can really top off a lot of kills if you know the exact spot that enemies are going to be pushing from or trying to flank from or just where they're at in general. Last tip I got for Ground War is basically just play with friends. I know this might seem kind of obvious, but a lot of people like to play solo, including myself. And it is doable in Ground War. Trust me, you can play solo. It's not like it's impossible. You can still find good flank spots and stuff like that. Ground War is a game that you can't win anyways. Even if you have a full party, it'll be hard to win. It's, you know, 32 versus 32. It's kind of a team-based game. If you don't have enough of your teammates doing objective stuff, you'll probably lose the game. So it's not really in your hands to control who's going to win ground war but overall if you have a full party of four it can control where you're going to spawn spawns are very very crucial in ground war that's why i always say either just hold flags and hold off waves of enemies that are just going to spawn or just taking your time while looking at the overview map after you die just so you can see where you can find a good spawn take your time when you spawn because ground war like i said a bad spawn can put you in a very awful situation where you're either running for miles or you get shot right off the bat so make sure you pick a good spawn but having teammates is crucial they can put you in very good situations, especially if you're playing with good players as well who are experienced in ground war. They know the maps. They know the hot spots. They know the positions where they can mow down enemies without them even noticing. So with spawning or having good teammates to spawn on is very crucial to ground war if you want the best of best experience. You know, if you're playing with random, sometimes you might just get partied up with a bunch of people who are sniping in the back of the map. So your only spawns at that point are just the flags, when instead, if you had a full team of good players, you could have people everywhere. You could have people on B flag, D flag, you could have people on C flag, even if they're spawn spawn trapping, you have options to where you can go. You have options to set you up for a bunch of kills, instead of you having to try to force a play out of something that isn't more beneficial for you, you can spawn into a situation that's already good for yourself. But guys, I really hope these tips helped you guys out with your ground war experience. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure you leave a like. If you hate it, go always dislike it. If you're brand new and you enjoy what you heard, don't forget to subscribe. And also hit that bell notification button. Also, if you want to chat with me, see some behind the scenes clips, you can follow me over on Twitter, at JBonaMan. And if you just want to catch me live streaming, I do that over on Twitch, at JBonaMan as well. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.